12. So make sure you have that packet out, please. This is lesson six. Solve for unknown angles, angles and lines at a point. All right, so your learning goal for today is that you will review formally learned geometry facts and practice citing the geometric justifications in anticipation of unknown angles and proofs. All right, so let's go ahead and start with opening exercise. It says determine the measure of the missing angle in each diagram. All right, so let's look at this. Um, looking at this, I'm looking for this angle right here. Hopefully you know that X would be equal to 36 degrees. I know that because vertical angles are equal. So these are vertical angles. All right, let's look at this one. Um, what do we know? These two angles form a straight line. A straight line is 180 degrees. So therefore, 180 minus 121 would tell me that Y is equal to 59. Looking at this, all three angles create a circle. The measure of a circle is 360 degrees. All right, so I would add 172 and 82, which would give me 254. And then I would subtract that from 360. So that's going to tell me that Z is equal to 106. What facts about angles did you use? Well, we used vertical angles are congruent. Congruent meaning equal. We used linear pairs form a supplementary angle or a straight line. This is what we call linear pairs. And we looked at this, um, those three angles are angles at a point, all right? They are a point and it looks like a circle. So angles at a point have the sum of 360 degrees. Okay. Alright, two angles. Um, you're going to have to flip this and look because we're dealing with um, nope, never mind. We're just going to kind of look at this and talk about this paragraph here. Two angles, angle AOC an angle COB with a common side OC are called what? All right, so if I have two angles and they have a common side, so we'll let this be AOC and we'll let this be COB. If they have a common side, these are what we call adjacent angles. They share a side. If you have two angles that share a common side, they are called adjacent angles. If C belongs to the interior of angle AOB, all right, so they would be, um, as long as they share a common side, and that point is on the inside of the angle. 
The sum of the angles of a straight line is 180 degrees, and two such angles are what we call a linear pair. Once again, guys, there's a lot of information here. Underline it, star it, whatever. It's going to become something that you're going to base a lot of your geometry on. Two angles are called supplementary if the sum of their measure is 180 degrees. 180 is supplementary. Two angles are called complementary if the sum of their measure is 90 degrees. Describing angles as supplementary or complementary refers only to the measure of their angles. The position of the angles or whether the pair of angles is adjacent to each other is not part of the definition. Okay? So make sure that when you're thinking about supplementary and complementary, you know it only deals with the measure of the angle. All right. In the figure, line segment AD is drawn. All right, AD is drawn. Find the measure of angle DCE. DCE. This right here is the measure of the angle I want to find. So now I've got to think about this. I've got to think about everything that we just talked about. All right. So, looking at this, what do I know about AD? AD is a straight line. Alright? Since I know that is a straight line, I know that this whole entire thing here has to measure 180 degrees. All three of these angles put together form a linear pair, or a linear group. A supplementary angle, however you want to justify it. So if I know this whole entire thing has to equal 180 degrees, look at what I know. I know the measure of this angle is 72 degrees. Look at this. This has something very important here. This has a square corner, meaning it is a right angle, meaning I know it measures 90 degrees. So 90 degrees plus 72 would give us 162 degrees. So I know that this angle and this angle put together equal 162 degrees. So then in order to find the measure of the small angle, I now have to subtract 180 minus 162, which would tell me that the measure of that angle is 18 degrees. Guys, this is a lot of what geometry is about. Finding those missing pieces. Making sure you're going to use so many things all together. The total measure of adjacent angles around a point is what? Well, we just said and said that if it is angles at a point, that it measures 360 degrees. Alright? So find the measure of angle, and guys, you read this right here, it's the measure of angle HKI. So HKI. I'm looking for the measure of this angle right here. Alright. Look at these angles. These are all adjacent angles. They share a common side, and they come together at one point, so I know they're going to equal 360 degrees. So if I know that, look at what I know. I know this is a measure of 133 degrees. This is a measure of 147 degrees. So let's add that together. So 147 plus 133 would give me, what, 280 degrees. Now that I know what the two angles equal, I can find the third angle by subtracting that from 360 degrees. So 360 minus 280 gives me 80 degrees. So my angle HKI is equal to 80 degrees.
vertical angles have blank measure. Well, we just said vertical angles have equal measure. They are congruent. They are equal. Two angles are vertical if their sides form opposite rays. Guys, here's what, um, think about this. Angles that are across from each other. So this would be vertical angles. These would be vertical angles. It says they're vertical if their sides form opposite rays. So RT is a side of this angle and RU is a side of this angle and they form opposite rays. They basically form a straight line. Opposite rays form a straight line. All right, so I know that they are vertical angles. So now it wants us to find the measure of angle T, R, V. So it wants us to find the measure of this angle right here. So because I know that angle T, R, V and angle S, R, U are vertical angles, I know that they have equal measures. So the measure of angle T, R, V is 52 degrees. And the more you use this, the more you'll get used to these properties. You'll understand them. All right, let's look at example number one. It says, find the measure of each labeled angle. Give a reason for your solution. So guys, at this point in time, I don't know if you know, geometry is a lot of proof. In other words, it's a lot of why. Why is something the way it is? Um, so this is kind of getting you into an introduction of proofs because now it wants to know why. It says give a reason. All right, so let's look at this. I want to know the measure of angle A. Here's, the, here's angle A right here. What do we know about these two angles? They form a linear pair, a supplementary angle, so therefore it's 180 degrees. So if this is 145, then I'm going to say 180 minus 145 gives me 35 degrees. So the measure of angle A is 35 degrees, and I have to tell why and then simply linear pairs are supplementary angles. Okay, linear pairs form supplementary angles. All right, the measure of angle B. So I need to look at this. Um, there's not a whole lot that I can do. Guys, I can actually look at this. I've got B, C, and D here. Automatically, I can find the measure of angle C. Look at C. What's it across from? It is across from the 40 degrees. So I know that C is 40 degrees because vertical angles are equal in measure. They're vertical angles. Now that I found C, I can find B. Well, think about this, guys. If I know that C is 40 degrees, or even this one's 40 degrees, what am I forming here? What am I forming with B in that 40 degree angle? I am forming a supplementary angle because it's a linear pair. It's a straight line. So 180 minus 40 is 140 degrees, once again, because linear pairs form supplementary angles. All right, so now I know this, I know this, I can 
now find the measure of angle D because look, angle B and angle D are vertical angles. So angle D is 140 degrees. Vertical angles are equal in measure. All right, now we're moving on to angle E. Look at angle E. It says that angle E is all of this. Notice that the arrow is going all the way around to the other side. Guys, these angles are on angles that come together at a point. So I know it's 360 degrees. There's, so 360 degrees minus 122 would give me 238. And why angles at a point sum to 360 degrees? Okay. All right, so let's look at this. In the figures below, segment A, B, segment A, or segment C, D, and segment E, F are straight line segments. Find the measure of each angle, um, find the measure of each marked angle, or find the unknown numbers labeled by the variables in the diagrams. Give reasons for your calculation. Show all your steps to your solution. All right, so we're just using everything that we've talked about so far. All right, so what do I know about this? If AB is a straight line, then how do I find the measure of angle A? I would 180 minus 144 would give me the measure of 36 degrees. Why linear pairs form supplementary angles? I'm looking for the measure of angle B. Once again, AB is a straight line. Um, I don't have a pair here, but what do I know about all of these angles? They form 180 degrees. So I would add 97 plus 36. And that would give me, what, 133 degrees? And then 180 minus 133 would give me 47 degrees. And this is consecutive adjacent angles. Consecutive means one right after the other. And notice I have angles that are together, one right after the other. So consecutive adjacent angles on a line sum to 180 degrees. Consecutive adjacent angles on a line sum to 180 degrees. Okay. All right, look at number three. Look at this. Look what I know. I know this is 90 degrees. I know this one's 40. This one's 36. I have a straight line here. I have consecutive adjacent angles. So I'm going to add all of this up. So 40 plus 90 plus 36. Gives me 166. Then I'm going to subtract that from 180. Which would give me 14 degrees. And it is the same reasoning that the last one was. Consecutive adjacent angles. Guys, I'm going to use this sign instead of writing out the word angle. 
consecutive adjacent angles on a line sum to 180 degrees. All right. It wants us to find the measure of angle D. This one's a little tricky. But we'll figure it out. Um, because they're both labeled with D, I know they're both the same measurement. I know this one's 82. So in order to figure this out, 180 minus 82 would give me, what, 98? All right, and because I know that these both are equal, then I would divide 98 by 2, which would give me 49 degrees. And once again, the consecutive adjacent angles on a line sum to 180 degrees. Looking at this, I see points that come together, which means they're 360 degrees. I know that these three angles here are equal because they're all labeled G. If they were not equal, they would not have the same letter. So um, I'm going to add up what I know. So 91 plus 91 plus 91 gives me 273. Then I'm going to subtract that from 360. Which would give me 87. But I have how many angles here? I have three. So now I need to divide... 87 by 3, and that's going to tell me that each one is going to be 29 degrees. All right, and angles at a point sum to 360. show all your work. I'm going to show you how to do these and then I'm going to let you do a few of these for homework tonight. All right, so let me show you how to do this one. So here's what I'm going to figure out. They all equal 360 degrees. Okay, so I know that 2x plus 85 plus x plus 35 is going to equal 360. Combine my like terms, so 3x plus 120 is equal to 360. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, subtract 120. I get 3x. Those cancel. I get 240. Divide by 3. X is going to be equal to 80. Okay? And I know that because angles at a point add up to 360. All right? Take a moment. Pause your video and see if you can figure out how you would set up number two or number, I'm sorry, number seven.
Okay? Let's look at this. So, here's what I know. I know that 2x and x or y minus x are vertical angles. Okay? I also know that this angle and this angle are vertical angles. So what can I do? Well, if they're vertical angles, then I can set 2x equal to y minus x. Alright? And then I'm going to solve for y. So add x to both sides. So y is equal to 3x. Alright, will that help me? Well, I don't know what X and Y are just yet. So, maybe vertical angles are not the best way to do this. Maybe I need to look at it from a different angle. Or, I know that Y plus X and Y plus X are equal. And I know what y is. So what if I do this? y plus x is equal to y plus x. And I know that y is 3x. That would give me 4x is equal to 4x. Can I solve for x? I can't. Alright, so I have to, and guys, I'm doing this because I'm showing you different ways to try to figure this out. Alright, so this isn't going to work for me. I've got to think about this. These are angles at a point. What do I know that equals? I know that equals 360 degrees. Okay. So, y plus x plus 2x plus y plus x plus y minus x is equal to 360. Combine all your like terms. All right, so I have 1, 2, 3, y, 2, 3, 4, minus 1 is 3x, is equal to 360. All right, now at this point in time, I need to solve for something. I'm going to solve for, um, let's solve for x. So I end up with 3x is equal to 360 minus 3y. I'm going to divide everything by 3, so I get x is equal to 120 minus y. So I have solved for x. Okay. Now, since I know what x is, I can plug that back in. So I can, um, I can choose to plug it back in in different places. 